Well, here's a fun fact. About half of the videos that I've uploaded recently have been edited on an iPad. Well, hello my friends. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Tony. I'm a filmmaker photographer in the St. Louis area. I love to make tutorials and help you become a better creative. And today, we are talking about iPads, specifically the iPad Pro, and we'll get into that soon. But we're gonna be talking about why would you ever want to edit on an iPad, especially if you've already got a workstation like this, and then what do you physically need to make it happen? What do you need to import the footage? What do you need to back up the footage? Everything that you would need with a professional workflow, what do you need? I said that really fast, that's okay. We're gonna keep going. So let's talk about my journey with my iPads. I've probably had, I don't know, three or four. I definitely had the iPad 3. I had maybe the iPad 4, iPad Air 2, and now I am still rocking the 2018 iPad Pro. Now there's a lot of differences between the newer generations, uh, the 18, the 20, and I think uh, they haven't come out with one yet, but uh, the iPad Pros that have the USB-C port versus all of the other ones. Now before, I felt like when they had the lightning port, uh, yeah, lightning connector, whatever it's called. Uh, I basically felt like that was a glorified iPod touch. Uh, and the reason why is because there wasn't a ton of pro features that you really need. You couldn't connect any like components to it. And it just, it just was, it was okay. They were really optimizing some of the iPad apps in those iPads, but really what happened when they released the USB-C iPad is it released a like wave of more um, expandability for the iPad. And so I jumped on board, I pre-ordered the iPad Pro back in the day, and uh, I'm so glad that I did because it does everything that I always wanted my iPad to do. Now, uh, there's some really cool things about the way that iPad apps work, opposed to an iPhone or iPod Touch back in the day, but uh, what really made the difference was when you could start plugging things in, like a hard drive, or you could plug in a card reader. All of those things uh, really just expanded and exploded right when they released this USB-C iPad. And since then, in 2018, since then, they've released the files app that is much more dialed in uh, they've released like sidecar so you can actually use your iPad as a screen all sorts of really good things for creatives like me to be able to really maximize my use of my iPad Pro so why would I edit on an iPad when I have my workstation well there's a couple reasons one I love my workstation but it sits here on the desk all the time. It never moves, I never take it with me, and my iPad is always in my bag. And uh, before, it was really kind of a pain. There wasn't any good software to be able to use on the iPad, um, and I just was really used to using Premiere Pro. But uh, with the release of LumaFusion, they've done a ton of work with that app to really bring it up to a spec where you can pretty much do whatever you need to on the iPad opposed to using Premiere Pro. And so I just realized, hey, I'm gonna try and do this. I'm gonna try and take this with me when I'm traveling, when I'm on the road. I've got my iPad with me in my bag. Can I take photos, take video, import them onto my iPad, back them up on my hard drive, and then be able to edit some quick on the fly things? And I realized, uh, I can, I can do that. And so I started doing that when I went to, um, 2019, I went to Africa and I only took my iPad and I was able to back up all of the footage that I took on that trip on my hard drives through my iPad, which was really revolutionary for me because before you'd have to take a computer and then I would always bring my iPad too. So I was bringing two really big devices that took up a lot of space in my bag. Well, then I realized if I'm already importing and backing up on my iPad, why don't I just start to get used to some of the, the software that you could use to edit. Now, when it comes to photos, I have been editing on my iPad for probably like a year and a half to two years, pretty much exclusively. And I may walk through that that um, kind of workflow. It's a little clunky still. And I've actually been working with Adobe a little bit about how to um, kind of optimize my workflow with when it comes to importing and when it comes to using both Lightroom Classic and 
uh, Lightroom mobile. Uh, and so uh, that's been a really kind of a cool conversation, uh, but maybe I'll do a video on that. The thing I love with the iPad, when you're editing photos, it feels so much more personal than when it's on a computer screen. I feel like there is this like disconnect between the screen and me. When I'm editing on my iPad, when I've got that pencil in my hand and I can physically do what I need to write on the photo in my hands, I just feel so much more personal with that photo, which feels a little weird until you try it. But I promise you, uh, if you haven't tried editing your photos on the iPad yet, you've got to do it. But when it comes to video, it's so much more complicated. And uh, when it first started, I just, I felt like it was really hard to get really fine tuned edits. And so you'll notice that a lot of my edits, uh, I went to Arkansas and uh, I was doing some daily vlogs there. They only have like 100 views because they're not really that great. But anyways, I, that's where I first started experimenting with LumaFusion and uh, the iPad Pro to be able to edit my videos. And uh, it just wasn't really that fine-tuned. And I feel like LumaFusion has really stepped up their, uh, their software and a couple other things have really made it much more practical to edit on the iPad in 2021. So uh, another thing that has really impressed me with the iPad is just this like sheer power that these these iPads have. Like I've got a specked out uh, iMac. Like I, I clicked all of the boxes to make it as fast as possible. And when it comes to editing 4K, R5, R6 footage, my iPad is better equipped than my workstation. Um, and part of it is because it's built for H.265 files and all of that kind of drama. But I'm telling you, man, these things, even with the like, like the uh, Geekbench and all of these testings, the iPads are so incredibly powerful right now. Just, you can't even like tap into all of their power because of the limitations of the software. And I think Apple's doing a lot of really good things to help that, but, I'm telling you, these iPad Pros are so freaking powerful. Mine's 2018, it's pushing three years old now, and it's still faster than, than anything. I mean, it's just incredibly fast. So that's another reason why I've kind of went back to being like, okay, so uh, if I can import and back up through my iPad and the power for the R5 and the R6 footage is so fast, why don't I just try and edit on my iPad instead of uh, going through the proxy kind of uh, routine on my workstation. And I tell you what, it edits so well. Like there is zero lag uh, no matter how many strands I have in my workflow. So it's really cool just to see the power and uh, we'll talk more about apps maybe in another video. Uh, but for today, what I wanna do is kind of walk through what I think you need as a video editor in order to make the uh, the process work. So the first thing you need is obviously an iPad. Like I said, I would not use the lightning port ones uh, because uh, I've tried it before and what happens is there's not enough power to power either a hub or a hard drive. And so when you plug in an adapter, say a lightning bolt or lightning port to USB, um, there's just, there's not enough power. And so you have to have an additional like supplemental power, which takes away the beauty of having that freedom of mobility. So uh, the USB-C iPads, so now we've got the uh, 2018 iPad Pros. We've got the 2020 update with the iPad Pro. And then we also now have the iPad Air, which has the USB-C. If you get the ones with the USB-C, you can do so much more. And I'll kind of explain why that is. Um, with USB-C, which I love, everything is going to USB-C. You can plug in a hard drive. This is a LaCie. I'll link all this below. You can also plug in a hub. And so this is a USB-C hub. It has uh, both a regular SD and a micro SD. So if you are, say, um, backing up your drone footage, you just kind of click it right in here and you can back it up on the fly. Same with your Canon R6, R5, any, any kind of camera that takes a SD card. All you need is this to be able to back it up. And what's nice about a hub, opposed to just a card reader, is you can plug in the card and then you can plug in your hard drive to your hub. 
And what that allows you to do is transfer straight from the SD card to your hard drive through your iPad Pro. So you can be doing this in the middle of a field when you're not anywhere near any power. Uh, maybe you don't have your laptop with you. Maybe you don't have a laptop at all and you just have a workstation. You can back up your footage on the fly to whatever hard drive you want. Now there's some other kind of like solutions for this. Narbox is one of those which I was never really a huge fan of that, partially just because of the, the price of it was so stinking expensive. Uh, with this setup, when you have just a USB-C hub and you have a USB-C hard drive, you can basically do whatever you want. You can buy whatever hard drive you want and you can just do it all through the files app and uh, I'll kind of talk through how we do that in a different video. Um, but you can do it, It's it actually works. And so then the only other thing that you need besides the iPad and the USB-C hub and a hard drive is uh, you can use the Apple Pencil and the uh, keyboards. Those are really nice. One, uh, the pencil helps you really fine tune things. And so you can, you can scrub really nice. You can make just a different adjustments, all sorts of different things with that pencil. And then if you've got the new keyboard, I don't have it yet. I've been thinking about it. If you bought the, the Magic Keyboard that just came out, let me know if you like it and it's worth the 300 bucks because I'm still rocking the old one, but it's it's beat up. It's, I mean, we've heard that before. It just doesn't hold up very well. And so uh, I'm thinking about buying the keyboard right now. And then when they release the next iPad, I'll probably upgrade my iPad because this one's three years old now. Um, it's still stupid fast though. But um, anyways, uh, let me know if you've bought the Magic Keyboard and it's worth it in the in the comments section. But uh, you can use the keyboards for shortcuts to speed up your workflow just like you can on a regular workstation. So uh, basically that's all you need to be able to one, back up your footage and then start editing. So that's all for this video. I hope that you have had a great start to your 2021 and uh, I'm really excited about what's gonna be happening in the future here. So uh, if this video was helpful, I know all we did was talk about like the, the skeleton of how to make this happen. But what's really nice is once you get a USB-C hub and a hard drive, you can back up your footage. And then from LumaFusion, you don't even have to put your footage on the iPad. So the size of your iPad doesn't matter. Uh, you can get whatever size you want. I think I have the middle tier because uh, when you're doing photos, you import them in, it uploads to the cloud, but you need a big cache to be able to handle all of those huge files from the R5. So uh, I went with the middle one, uh, but that size doesn't really matter because you actually link the folder on your hard drive in LumaFusion so you don't have to store all of that video footage on your iPad. Uh, once again, we'll talk more about that in the future. But uh, if this video is helpful, I would love for you to like it. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to keep up with some of the new things that we're gonna be talking about with iPads in the near future. And uh, with all that, I'll see you in the next one.